Look at that. Oh my God. That is frightening. Hello everyone, welcome to my Luminar AI update 1.4 Baka AI review. Um, so in this review, we're going to go through a load of demos of six different images to edit. So let's crack on into it and see how we get on. So um, these are the six images I downloaded. So they're stock images. So what we're going to do is they all have a reasonable depth of field to the images themselves. So what we're going to do is going to edit the six of these photographs and see how we can improve them. So um, let's start off with this one. No, actually, we start with the first one and we'll work our way through. I'm going to divide this video into chapters too as well. So if you just want to see each individual image, we'll do it. So this is one, two, three, four, five and six. So let's go to image number one. So here we have a person sitting on the rock with a beach or the beach, the sea in the background with a few houses too as well and whatnot. I'm kind of going, that's a nice photograph. But if you wanted to give it a shallower depth of field, what I can do is I can just go into edit and then I will move down along until I get to portrait baka or bokeh or however you like to pronounce it and get my slider. And if I just slide this up to 100% for starters, you can see how much of a difference that's after making. So the focus is now on your subject. Everything else is still there in the background, but the depth has just been pushed back beautifully. And let's say once you put your mouse cursor over the actual image itself, it'll show you the cutout. So actually what's painted in. So that is the subject. It automatically picked all that out itself. So if I say, right, I actually want to bring that back down along a small, but again, we're losing a bit too much depth in that. So you can just pop it down to wherever you want. And we'll say, oh, you know, that's nice enough. That's exactly what I wanted. Or if you say, look, I want to pop it up to maybe around 70 or 80%, somewhere up around there. Now, the other really cool thing with this too as well is you say, oh, that's it, you're just adjusting your depth of field. No, there's actually something else that's really cool in this. You can go down here and you can select background. So if I click on that, you can adjust the brightness of the background. So you can bring the brightness down of the background and bring the brightness back up. So if you just wanted to bring it down a tiny little bit, you can bring it down. You can adjust your highlights glow. So in other words, the, the amount of glow that are actually going to be the highlights themselves, it's kind of self-explanatory. You can adjust the warmth then too as well. So if you want to make it warmer, slightly more of a yellow tone in the background, or bring it down slightly more of a cooler tone on the background. So if you wanted to pop it down to somewhere here now, let's say, and you say, right, oh, that's what I love. Now your next adjustment here is your depth correction. So if I pull that back, you'll see the rock here is starting to blur out. So it usually does a really good job. So if I bring it forward, you can see the depth is actually being pushed back into the image. So in other words, we're getting more depth in our image. So again, if I pull it forward here now, you'll see that rock is starting to blur out. And if we bring it too far, it just looks ridiculous. She's sitting in midair, but you can see how this line is being pulled across here. So, and again, if I bring it back along there now again, if you get it wrong, what it's going to look, it's going to look completely artificial. As you can see in the image itself, she looks like she's sitting on a blurred rock. How is she sharp and the rock isn't? So it's important to get that right. And as I say, the software usually nails it in the head straight away. So, um, so what we're going to do is just bring that back to zero. So that is that photograph kind of edited for you. So if I just go up here now, if I click on film grain or something, go up here and bring back my slider, you can see the before and after. So this is our before image and this is our after image. So I just cool down the temperature slightly at the background. Some people might like it, other people won't. Not the point, I'm just showing what you can do. And also we're varying our depth going back. So you might say, oh, I'd like less depth than that. Just go back into our settings and whack up our slider a bit more, 100. The other little cheat you can do with this is, if you say, oh, I actually want less depth than that again, you can export the image and then re-import it again and do the same thing over again. And it's going to it's going to affect your depth in the same way again. So you're going to double up on the effect. Now, it's, um, it's a crazy way of doing things, but it does work. So that's our first photograph. And again, just going back to our slider, just pop this up along. This is our before image. And this is our after image. And you can see how 
the image has been transformed completely, all of a sudden we have an incredibly distinct subject in the image. It's, the, I suppose, the, the houses in the background, which don't look very beautiful, have actually been taken out of the image as such. So it just goes to show how this software works so blooming easily. It's actually quite frightening. So that's our first shot. So if we go to our second one, which is this one. And again, there is, there is a nice depth to this image. We don't have, let's say everything in the background is not completely in focus. But when I look at it, there's two things I see. So um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go to portrait back there now again, okay. And bring the slider up. So it's just gonna drift out the background slightly there now again. But the big thing with this for me is you can just bring down the brightness fractionally. So again, we're adjusting the brightness of the background. So we can just help balance the image a small bit more. I thought when it was when everything was set normally, I thought the background was a bit too distracting. It was a bit too bright. So if I just bring the brightness down a small little bit, and I say that's that looks a bit better to me there. No, personally, it looks a small bit more balanced. So again, you can change the warmth and the color temperature in the background too as well if you want to bring it up or bring it down. I'd normally say try and ma try and match it to the the color that's being produced on the model itself. So that looks kind of that looks kind of good enough. Again, if you just want to go up, um, I'm just going to try something completely mad and add in a bit of mystical here now. Um, just might soften it out a small bit again there now. Um, yeah, that looks nice enough. I'm just trying to think, is there anything else we could pop up the vibrancy a small bit? Again, I'm completely ruining someone else's photograph here now. So. Yeah, that looks, that looks good to me. Again, we're just gonna pop up our slider and before and after, just to show you the before and after effects. So this is before and this is after. And you can see how the background has been completely transformed and all of a sudden we're getting a different image. Now you might prefer the original image, that's not the point. It's about showing you what the software can do. And in incredibly quickly, you see, if I reset everything here now, if, um, if this works for me, so everything is back to normal here now again. So if I just get rid of the slider, so that's the image reset to the default setting again. So if I just want to go in and say, right, I'm going to adjust this image to the way I want it. I could literally just bring this up and kind of say, yeah, that's good enough. Bring my brightness down a small bit, go back towards mystical again. We'll try that again for the crack. And uh, we'll go a bit mad at this time. That's way too much. Um, here gives you a nice dreamy soft effect. Um, will we go back for color again? We'll go back for color again and just bring up the vibrance a small little bit. Um, and again, you see, you can go to the HSL sliders too as well if you say to yourself, look, actually what I want to do is I want to pop up that red. I want that red a small bit brighter. You can go down to luminance, you can go to red and you can just brighten that up and bang, there you go. And you're thinking, wow, that's exactly the photograph I wanted. That is exactly what I was looking at. Um, sorry, no a second. If I just go back along here, there's one thing I'm looking at here now. I'm just going to go back down along here. And what I'm going to do is just bring the brightness down a tiny fraction again. And yeah, that's our photograph done as far as I'm concerned. Again, different strokes for different folks. What one person might like, another one won't. Not the point of this, uh, this video really, I suppose, as such. It's just showing you what you can do. Like, look at that for a difference. That is a completely different photograph. Absolutely stunning. That, that really is super cool. So again, as saying just with that photograph, you can see there was a slightly shallower depth of field, but um, let's go to our next one. So this one, beautiful shot there now again, woman standing in a field, sun setting behind and whatnot. What we're gonna do, try and do is just drift that out a small bit more again. It's quite a complex image. There's an awful lot going on. So we'll just have a look and see how this handles it here now again. So if I catch my slider and just pop this up, Wow. Oh, that's really good. That is, Jesus, that's really good. God, even the painting mask green in that is practically perfect. Jesus, that, <laughs> that really, that really is cool. Um, I'm gonna go mystical here again for the crack, just to see, um, bring that up a small bit, just to soften that image down a small little bit. Um, yeah, 
and now the question being is do you want to add a bit more warmth to the back of the image don't you um highlights glow nah. i think that was all good enough with brightness we could pull back a tiny fraction even though just a very very small bit and again i would probably just be tempted just to go up to color here now again so i'm gonna go up to color and just pop up the vibrancy a small little a small little piece not much yeah and hmm light maybe pop our shadows a small bit more just see it's too much just somewhere there no um other than that we could i think that's gonna look very artificial yeah bring that back down and so somewhere there so just really quickly editing that photograph you can see how much of a change there is there now so if i go from before and after so this is our before image we still have quite a bit of distracting detail in the background nobody wants to see that so what we're going to do is just slide this across and boom there it's gone that is that is super cool that really and what you will notice is if you look at the hair above here and the hair out in front and you're thinking god you know you might like it or you mightn't like it but if i slide this across it actually gets rid of it for you so that's kind of um it's tidying up the hair a small bit now again you can go in and you can paint that back in along again so it's very easy to do it but i'm just not going to spend the time now today because the next thing i want to show you is photograph number four and i think this is going to be really good because there's a lot going on in this image there is a slightly shallow depth of field on this shot then again but i just feel there's an awful lot going on in the background and the background is quite bright that it's you kind of see oh there's a city and there's a person standing there what i would personally like to do is try and get the model or the person standing there to pop a small bit more again so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here we're going to adjust our depth of field again and you can see that is working absolutely perfectly that's nuts and just to look at that the mask that it painted on our subject is practically perfect that is that is really good again you whack it up to 100 it looks really good i would personally bring it back down along a small little bit but the one thing i would do then again is just bring down the brightness maybe just so she's popping a small bit more in the image again personal choice what one person love another person will hate again you can adjust the, the 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 warmth of the image and the background so you can bring it up a small little bit you can bring it down a small little bit um i might be tempted to leave it around there now because you can see there is sort of a soft golden light just shining through the side of her hair and whatnot or that's actually car headlights in the background is it <laughs> but even on her shoulder and on her arm and whatnot you can see it's not a very cool light so i am um, yeah that looks that looks really cool uh going to mystical with the likes of that now is going to be an absolute disaster i would think um yeah it's going to soften it way down it's going to be too much altogether you see the crazy thing about those shots but again it's personal choice you have the harsh city ruggedness the big drains and whatnot here and if you soften that down too much it just doesn't look right it doesn't look natural that that's my perspective on it anyway so um i would be inclined to to leave that as normal and that looks really cool so again we're just going to go back to the before and after so this is the after this is the before and look at that for a difference that is absolutely criminal that really is very very good right um so final image our site second last <laughs> image i should say again portrait uh just looking at this and the first thing when i saw this photograph is the private property sign no trespassing and i was going god you know you you see that before you see the model and again it's no criticism you know it's it could be a look someone is going for but it's just when i see that i'm kind of going ah, i just like to just 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 drop the depth the small little bit there so uh, again just go into our portrait bucket slider and just slide that up along and what that's going to do is just drift out the focus on the background here so and when i go up another small bit again you can see it's after drifting that way down along 
So, and we can bring down our brightness too as well as Marbid. That might really help. Um, yeah, helping us Marbid. That is helping. There is no doubt about it. Uh, color warmth. This is going to be interesting. Warm it up with Marbid? No, don't like that. I think we bring it down. Give it a slightly harsher effect. Yeah, that's going to help her pop from the background too as well. You better color separation and whatnot. Um, yeah, really like that. Just going to go up the color there now again and just pop the vibrancy a small little bit. That's way too much. I was thinking that so somewhere back around here. And mm, other than that, yeah, again, we can go back to mystical again. And as you can t see, <laughs> like using that slider <laughs> i don't know why but i just i just love the kind of dreamy effect it gets sometimes and yeah that's that's working that for me that's working so if i bring it up too much it's gonna look ridiculous bring it down a small bit it's just it's just a small bit a small bit harsh so if i pull it back to here let's say now again we're just gonna pop in here now and look at the before and after so this is our after image this is our before image and if you look at the private property sign there now, it just pulls it out. It just it just pushes it back into the image. It gets rid of it. And even when you look at the, the railing here on the stairs, like how the focus is just drifting back fractionally here and drifting back along here at the steps and whatnot, that's crazy. That is, you, you'd, <laughs> you'd find it hard to believe that was done by software. The 3D depth mapping in this really, really works. That's absolutely nuts. Um, again, these are just super fast images, but the last one we're going to go to, I think this is going to be the one, um, because look at what's going on here. There is a shed load going on here, and you're thinking that photograph is really beautiful. Um, you just like you just like to mess around with a small little bit, so I'm sorry if I go over here now and just go into Portrait Baca again, or yeah, and slide this up along again we're going to see what happens wow that that's really good look at that look at the focus just drifting out in the background here watch it kind of walk into the image the focus as i slide this up and down see that that is amazing you can see it's going in kind of a linear scale, so it's running back along the image. That's really that. That's bloody too good. i be honest with you, that is that is really too good. What the hell are you doing, Numenor? You're gonna make every photographer a professional photographer, do you know that? That is just look at that. Look at that. As I'm sliding that up now, watch the depth just go on the image. And the fact that those buildings, I was thinking this might work. I said it was either going to be a disaster or it might work. But that is just... Wow. Wow. And oh my god, look at the, look at the depth and look at the skirt. Look at even the painting on the skirt. Look at how well all that's working. And look, when I vary the depth, it's not affecting the skirt. It's not affecting. It's just doing the background. Look, look at this. Look at the line running down along there. And as you can see, there is. If I bring the, if I bring the, what you call it, image back to normal there now again, you can see there is a nice bit of depth running back in along. It is faded out. You can still see the background. But when I looked at this, it was actually this building on this side. I said, this is going to be really interesting to see how well this works. I actually genuinely thought I would have to delete this part of the video. <laughs> I was thinking that's gonna look stupid. Do you know, there's no way that's gonna pull back in linear scale in the correct depth of that image. That's not going to work. It's as simple as that. But that is just. Look at that. Oh my god. That is frightening. Absolutely shocking stuff screw you luminar <laughs> jesus this is that's just 
Wow. Well, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll go on from this. So we'll just bring the depth up along. And um, this is the other thing I want to try in this note. So brightness. Uh, adjusting the brightness. Oh, cool. Yeah. Exactly what I was hoping would happen. You can just bring the brightness up and down your background. If you say, look, it was a bit too bright. It was a bit too distracting. I just want to pop it down a small little bit. So our model here is going to be center stage. And... Um, that just really works. And again, you can mess around with the warmth of your background too as well. If you want to help her stand out a small bit or help her blend in a small little bit, you can do that. So I suppose you're bringing in kind of a yellowy orangey tone as you're increasing the color temperature here now. So we're at plus 17 at the moment. So it's, it's helping the whole image to gel a small bit more. Whereas if I pull back down along, you can see the dress is not changing color. That dress is staying exactly the same. What's changing color is the background. The color temperature, even on that sign, as I look at it there now, is changing very little. And if I bring the amount slider back down so the sign isn't being adjusted, and I'm gonna adjust the warmth here now, God almighty, that's really, that's really good. So again, if you're looking for two completely different looks, in the same photograph, you can pop this in, and you're kind of going, wow, she, it helps pop her off the background completely now, because of the fact that there is nice color separation between your background and your foreground. You could say, oh, it looks a bit artificial, Kieran. Fair enough. Then you just dial back the effect a small little bit. So if I go back around here and say, that looks better. Or you can say, look, I want to blend her in a small bit more so it looks a bit better. You can just vary your color temperature and boom, there you go. That is really cool. That, that's... <laughs> that's... That's mind-blowing. That really is mind-blowing. Jesus. Um, so, uh, so, we're just going to go in here. We're going to go to that. Let me say we'll go... Da, da. Oh, look. <laughs> we call it Mystical. Again, my favorite slider here now in portraits. We're going to pull that down along a small bit. Give you a slightly dreamy effect. And what we're going to do is go on before and after. So, if we go... So, this is the after. And that's the before. So, this is the image we started off with. And this is the image we ended up with. So... Now, the one thing I will say is, you can see just here, just there, you're losing a small bit of the pattern and the texture. So, what we can do is, and this is going to be interesting here now, if I go into Portrait back again, and if I go into my background, and if I go Edges, Correction. So, if I pull this back, yeah, we have... We have more detail there now and um, if I bring edge correction up it's going to get rid of it yeah so it's a matter of messing around with your slider or you can also go into as well and you can paint so I can go defocus specific areas and paint that so if I go defocus here now what's going to happen there now is um, when I go to that that image is going to be blurred out that part of the image is going to be blurred out but we don't want that so, um, yeah, just went back there now again with Control Z. So you can see that's our image, and that looks. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm slightly, I'm slightly blown away by that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I, I just genuinely wasn't expecting that. Look at that. I think that's cool. If you watch that building there, and as I slide up along, just watch that slowly drift out of focus. And I'm pulling it up along now and we're heading towards the lamppost. Now we're heading towards the lamppost with the side. You can actually see the focus creeping back along the wall. It's like standing there with a mirrorless camera and adjusting your aperture, <laughs> just dropping your aperture down and physically watching your background vanish. That's, ex that's exactly what's going on here. We're actually watching the background vanish with a slider. That is completely nuts. That that really and truly is completely nuts. That that's just crazy. That is. Look at it. I could spend all day playing with this note, being honest, sure. Because again, I, I've used this um, quite a bit in my own portraits and whatnot, and it it really does work. It really, really, really does work. And um, I just, I was looking for an image, something like this. I came across this in the stock photography site and I said, look, do you know, this is actually perfect. This is actually perfect to try it on. 
and I genuinely was thinking it was going to be a pig in a bag. <laughs> well, not a pig in a bag, I shouldn't say that, but it wasn't going to work as well as that, and the focus wasn't actually going to drift back along the wall. But that's... Yeah, I'll stop talking about it now. I'm just blown away. I'm just going... Wow. 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 <laughs> Look at that. That's criminal, that is. That is absolutely criminal. I can't think of... I don't know. It's, do you know, it's actually scary where this is going. It genuinely and truly is frightening. I just... Wow. Yeah, um, so yeah, that's, that, that's Luminary AI for you. Editing portraits. Again, if you are editing portraits, I'm going to put another vote, um, what you call this video up on this about editing. Um, we're going to go back. We're going to pick this one, for example. So, if you set yourself right, you know, what else can I do to this? You have skin AI, body AI, you have face AI. So, if you go into it, you can actually adjust the light on the face. Which you might say, oh my god, that's completely unrealistic here. That's not the point. There's a slider there for you to adjust it the way you want it. And you might say, god, we're going to pop it back to here. And the one thing I would highly recommend you do when you're editing a photograph, and this is what I love about Luminar AI, you say to yourself, right, that looks great, no. And then you go adjusting something else, say, that looks great too as well. Pop up the before and after slider. Because every now and then you look at it and you kind of go, nah, that's too much. That That's my original shot. And watch the face now. And you're thinking, mm, yeah, small little bit. Just a small bit too much. Just a tiny fraction. So if I bring down the, the face light again and bring it down to here maybe. And just try that again. Whereas what oftentimes happens is you go and you start editing and thinking face light. Oh, this is really going to draw attention to our face now. Oh, that looks, that looks amazing there now. And then you look at your before and after picture and you're thinking, dear God, and it might be the following day. <laughs> look at that, what, you, what you started off with and what you ended up with. And you say, no, nah, that's too much. That is too much. That just looks wrong. And again, I'd probably bring it back somewhere around there now or something. Just, it looks a bit more natural but it's still drawing attention to the face. So there's a few things we've done there as such. Um, the first being is we've knocked back our depth. And the second thing is we've adjusted the face lighting. So we're drawing attention to the face. Now, again, you can go into the eyes too as well and whatnot. And you can, like, some, some of the things in this are cool. Like, enlarge eyes. Is it gonna work? Yeah, there we go. Her eyes have gone bigger. And bring it back down along again. And eyes gone smaller. So, you know, this is, this is the eye enhancer. And I just, you know, you have to be careful with these things because you end up with an alien before you realize it. So I look at the before and after. It's just, it's a way too much. So what you do is you just go gradual increases. And, you know, you're not, you're not whacking anything up 40 or 50% or 100%. You're just bringing it up a tiny little bit sometimes. Just enough to just give it that tiny little kick. So, that's not too far off there now. So, again, that just looks good. That looks, that looks really good. Um, so yeah, uh, Luminary AI, would I recommend it? Hell yes. Uh, I use it, I use it a lot myself, to be honest with you. And I use it for portraiture. Um, I use the odd from a time for commercial work, and I also use it for um, landscapes. So I do, I work on many genres of photography. So I find Luminary Eye works incredibly well. I also use it as a plugin in Lightroom. So it just, you know, it, it's absolutely amazing value for money. It is, people compare Photoshop and Luminary AI. I'm saying, right, do you ever look at the price difference? Do you know, <laughs> Luminary AI is absolutely astonishing astounding value for money it really and truly is there is no other software out there that can do what luminar ai does for that price it is criminal and it's one of the reasons why i'm really 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 very happy to be working with skylum because they are offering absolutely amazing value for money so i'm um, 
that's basically it. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask them. And I also have a discount code too as well, which can kind of pop up on the screen there too as well, for Luminar AI, which will give you 10 euros, $10 or 10 pounds off the price of it. So please do feel free to use it and I hope it saves you a bit of money. Other than that, um, just say, see you out there guys.